Hello and welcome back to another Artist Jamari video. This is my first ever tutorial since we're all stuck at home in this crazy quarantine in 2020. The materials that I'm going to be using are just a simple 9 by 12 inch canvas, four different colors of paint, a white, um, a black, just like a ivory black, titanium white. Then um, I'm using phthalo blue, as well as the last color there is a bright magenta. It doesn't really matter what type of paint you're using. You can use any different kind. Not everybody has acrylic paints available or maybe these specific colors. I just wanted to keep this piece as simple as possible. Um, not with a lot of colors, so you could change it up if you wanted to. And I'm just using four basic brushes, two square tip brushes, um, and two round tip brushes, one on both the square and the round tip, one's bigger and one's smaller. Um, I'm going to start out with my big square tip brush, and I just like to loosen up those bristles, get them nice and soft, uh, dip them in the water to get them softened up before I start. And once I've gotten those bristles nice and soft, then I'm going to take the water that's left on those bristles and just moisten my canvas. Um, this is something I like to do just to help the paint spread around. It makes things a lot easier to lay. We're doing just the background, that first layer of paint. And sometimes when it's primed, um, that canvas can get a little bit dry. So we just like to moisten it just to help that paint flow for that first layer. It's not a, something you have to do, but I found it's a nice tip that just helps. So the first step is going to be the background. And once we've finished getting that all nice and wet, um, it doesn't have to be soaking wet by any means. We're going to use our blue and our white, and we're going to mix those two colors together to get a really nice light blue. We don't need to mix it completely thoroughly. We want a little bit of difference in the color, um, you know, as we stroke it on, because this is a background, we're going to be layering um, the other pieces of the painting on top of it, we won't really see very much of it. So it's okay if there's streaks and strokes in there, different colors. You see I added a little, little bit more white just to tone that blue down and get it a really nice sky baby blue. So once you get your blue color mixed to the color that you like, the um, lightness or whatever that looks good to you, you're just going to load your brush on both sides and start stroking it right on there. I have my painting in um, a portrait, the portrait area, it's not in landscape, and I'm just gonna speed up these areas where I'm painting um, so you guys can see it. You can see the shininess uh, gives like an indication that, you know, it's wet, it's very moist, it's reflecting the light. You wanna keep it that way. At some point I add in a little bit more white. Here I'm dabbing just a little bit more white directly on the canvas. Like I said, to get a lot of difference in color for that background. So there's lighter areas, darker areas. As it dries, because you put that water down, it will also kind of add some variation in the colors. Um, but it just, as a background, you want to have texture. You want it to be really beautiful. And we're layering paint on top of it, so it definitely does not have to be perfect. This is always just the first layer. I want people to you know, just get that creative juices flowing, start feeling comfortable with the paint and get ready to do the rest. So here I'm just going around the edges with the remaining main amount of paint that I have on my brush. It's not a requirement, but it makes it look professional and nice and just tidying it up. And now we're going to take a pause and let this dry completely. All right, next we're going to use our biggest round brush. If you don't have a round brush, you can still use your square tipped brush, not a problem at all. You're just gonna wanna get a sharp edge because we're gonna be creating the tree branches in black will be the next step that we're doing. So we can see in the image that I showed that these branches are different sizes. So what I like to do when I have to do line type work is I create what is called a wash. And you'll notice that I'm dipping my brush into my water and then just mixing that in on the edge of my black paint here to create more of a soupy consistency. 
And what this will allow for is for my brush to move more smoothly over the canvas when I'm creating these lines because we're just gonna be stroking them out. We don't wanna stop or have a big clump of thicker paint that creates like a glob or anything. So because there's quite a few branches, not a lot, but several different branches, I'm gonna create you know a good amount, probably using half of that dollop of black paint that I put out there to create this wash. Now the wash, um, using black paint, it can be dark, but sometimes once the paint dries and evaporates, you'll have to go over it again. But that's fine, that's a lot easier to do um, once those lines are already established. But creating the lines, we just want to make sure that we have a nice, smooth brush stroke. So I'm going to start right here in the corner. If you want to measure, sometimes I do finger measurements, you know, be a couple fingers up. And I'm not going to create the width of the branches right now. I'm just going to kind of create the direction. So this one, you know, branches are not straight. It's going to kind of go up in that way. We're going to create some smaller pieces coming off. And remember the branches aren't perfectly straight, so you can add some little kinks and crooks in there. We're gonna put one of the pieces going off this way so we can put that little bird in. Have some more pieces coming up this way. And like I said, it's okay if your lines aren't perfect right now because we're just establishing them before we go in and thicken them up. Just like that. It doesn't have to be really difficult. I'm going to have one kind of coming up this direction just to change that flow a little bit. And now that's, I've filled up the majority of the canvas. I've left a little space here for my little birdie. And now I'm just going to, with that same brush, go back and fill in some of these lines. Now, what you want to remember when you're creating tree branches is though they're always wider at the you know, closer part to the trunk, and as they go up, they get thinner and thinner. So knowing that I want this to be one of the thicker branches, so I'm just gonna widen this up. And you see how it was kind of squiggly before? I'm just creating a straight line, and if you have little parts where you go off, make that be a little node or a little notch in your tree. Think of how tree branches go. You don't have to do it in one stroke. You could do brush strokes like I am, like that, and just taper it up. Now one way, if your brush is filled with paint or your point is not sharp enough, with these round tip brushes is you roll it between your fingers, rolling it like this against your palette or plate or whatever you're using to hold your paint, and it will create a sharp tip that then you can use to create some of these more delicate edges. You'll notice that I'm holding my brush up here. I'm not holding it down here like a pencil or a pen. I'm holding it up here so I have more flexibility and I'm able to flow more with the painting. So we'll create that branch. We can go up kind of wide in this area here. Now lines can be difficult for some people. I feel like the more you think about drawing a line, even for myself when I'm doing pieces with a lot of line work, the more that I'm concentrating on it, the more my hand will start to shake. You can always turn your canvas and move it around so that it's more convenient and easy for you to reach some of these lines. Another thing that you can do when you're doing lines is brace your pinky against the canvas so that your hand isn't floating. Sometimes a floating hand is difficult for people to control a little bit more. So you can always brace your pinky down and then create your lines like that. Even if you're using an easel, which is also a possibility, you can brace your pinky, oh shucks. Brace your pinky and then uh, create those lines. So here's a perfect opportunity to show you how to fix mistakes like this. If you drop your brush or you get a smudge 
and you catch it right away, you just take that clean brush, clean your brush out, take a little bit of water and rub it and it will come right off and you can take a paper towel or even because paper towels are scarce these days, you could take a rag and just wipe that off. I had to use this paper towel for something else. So I had it sitting there. So I'm gonna go back to my round brush and I'm just gonna keep creating these lines. This is gonna be another thicker branch here. And you notice I'm not doing that one that goes over the top yet. We're gonna do this one underneath. We're gonna make it nice and wide at the base and then thin out. And we can add little cricks and crooks and nodes and different things that you find on tree branches. Spin it around this way. I'm just speeding up this process again. You guys have to get the gist of it. This is the time where you can just play around. Feel, don't feel like you need to rush during this process. Take your time and really make sure that your branches look nice. They don't look messy or really sloppy. If you happen to make a mistake or you make your branch too wide or it looks a little bit wonky, you're not really liking it, you can use a spray bottle or the same brush technique I showed you to fix that little um, mark that I had got on the canvas. And you can erase, as long as the paint is still wet, you can erase large amounts. But you just have to catch it as long as it's wet. And I'm just going around touching up all these different branches that I have, widening them to the left part of the canvas and making sure that they're thinner. I go around the edge just again, again to give it that professional look and bring those branches around that part. Not necessary, but just something that, like I said, I find adds a nice little professional touch to the piece. So let's finish up these branches. Outline it with shapes. I moved to my smaller round brush. So if you have one that's a little bit skinnier, you need a sharper point kind of to do some of this bird. So uh, if you can find a brush with the sharpest point that you have, that'd probably be better. Um, and then we're just gonna create that wash again by mixing that water in with our black paint. We're gonna kind of decide where we want our bird to be. So I decided that I kind of wanted mine to be in this area. And it's a good idea to put it in before you do the blossoms, just so you have an idea of where you want to put it. So first I'm just gonna put kind of an oval shape for the body. Rounding that out. Then I'm gonna work on the tail feathers. So I'm gonna have those kind of go this way a little bit, right? We're just doing the outline right now. And then I'm gonna do the head. So I'm gonna kind of start with the upper part and work my way down, just doing a curve. Then on this area, saying it goes in kind of there. I'm just gonna bring this up to meet and then bring the beak off from there. Once you get the beak on, you can kind of see better what shape you want this rounded area to be. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Bring that beak down a little bit and just round that out. these tail feathers, we could just firmly press our brush against the canvas and drag it up. And that'll create kind of those long feathers that it typically has. We're just gonna work these edges, making sure we like the shape before we fill in. So once it's time to fill in, I'm actually going to go into the thicker part of that black. Fill in the body. Just 
So here I'm just using my same smaller round tipped brush and I'm filling in that body with the dark heavy body black paint giving it really nice um, thickness that I can then layer some white over which will be the next step doing the detail. This is a good time just to kind of fix any rough edges, build things up, make sure it looks nice. This bird compared to the final product is very different because I kind of fix some of those edges, smooth things out, add a little bit of ruffle on that right side, build up the head and different things like that to get ready to add the detail, which will be next. We're on to step four, which is the bird detail. So with our same small tipped round brush, we're going to go right into our white without washing the black off unless it's really, really loaded with black. You can rinse some of that off, but we're just going to go directly into the white and just start stroking on some of those breast feathers, doing that chest area of the bird, kind of marking out where the feathers will round out, you know, to the back area. Here's a clear view. I'm wiping off that area of the branch so that I can add some feet. Later, you'll see the little clawed feet kind of hanging onto that branch right there below the chest. So here I'm just kind of smoothing the black and the white paint together to create a gray because the black is still wet. If yours isn't, that's fine. We're gonna have to add more paint to get it more white. And here again, I'm just gonna be smoothing out some of these edges looking at it to see how it looks now that the highlights added on and figuring out um, how I can really make it pop and look nice. So I'll just be picking up little bits of white, taking it around that final edge. I end up kind of smoothing that little corner I have in there, um, which I thought made the bird look a lot better. If you'd like to do that as well, you notice that on the final picture that that the left hand side where it kind of dips in there a little bit right under the beak I smooth out. So once I've got that chest area kind of filled in like I like, I'm just going to add a few little white streaks to the back feathers and along the top of the head. You see I'm just using a very, very, very light touch. Now my touch changes on these tail feathers. I per press a little bit more firmly with my brush to create nice um, bright strokes because feathers have different streaks and strokes in them. So that's what I'm adding here on that tail feather section. Now I'm just thoroughly washing my brush, making sure that any gray or black paint is completely rinsed off. I'm grabbing a nice dollop right on the tip of that brush. Here you can see it. And I'm going to mark my eye so I'm just firmly pushing that dollop down and then I'll just kind of swirl it around, which there's still a tiny bit of gray um, or water still in my paint and I like that. So it's it has a little bit of variation in the brightness as well. I'm also just gonna take um, that small round tip brush and I'm going to add a highlight up the beak, gently pushing. And I'm also going to do my feet. So I just do three little curved lines going around the branch. It gives it a more 3D effect, just using some gray paint. We're gonna do three on each side. And then I just fill in the bottom part of that gray area. From here, I'm gonna keep working white into the breast area. I'm also gonna take a little bit of a light gray color and just run that up the branches to add a little bit of highlight as well. I don't show that on camera. Um, and I'm just gonna work this white back in so it's nice and bright because we're gonna lay a red over the top of it later. So here, I'm just taking that same round tip, small round tip brush and I'm adding black on top of the white circle that we put down for the eye. That area has dried now. And I'm just gonna go back into my white and clean my brush off. And I'm gonna keep working white into the, the chest area of that bird um, because I decide that I wanna give it a red belly. And so it, I want it to be a little bit whiter for that red or magenta to really pop on top of that. Here I'm just working that white back and forth 
creating kind of a streaking effect with the underlying gray so it really looks like feathers. Loading my brush up with more white paint to go into the tail feathers and add highlights there as well. I'm just pushing my brush down and firmly pulling up to create those streaking effects on the tail feather section. Next is step five, doing the blossoms. We'll do the blossoms in three different steps, layering the paint up to create a really beautiful effect. So we're gonna go back to our big square tip brush, make sure it's nice and clean, our canvas is clean. We're gonna go in with our bright magenta, or red or pink or whatever color you've decided to use. We're just gonna grab a dollop of that. I'm gonna load my brush up on both sides, getting a nice amount of paint going to start to dab the canvas to create the base. So we'll do this in four different steps. The first color will just be the raw magenta in full color, not mixed with any white. This will give the illusion of shadows. You know, like I said, we like to create different color patterns in the painting. So you'll see I'm just rolling the brush back and forth between my fingers and just firmly pressing down on the canvas. We call this dabbing. And I'm just gonna dab this red color all around the canvas, focusing mainly on the ends of the branches. Here I've sped up the process so that you could see it kind of in a more speedy fashion. And you see I'm just using the same technique, twisting that brush between my fingers back and forth so that every dab is not the same size and shape. That gives it a more realistic effect as well. And it's just fun to do. And I just go around working in some of that darker color. I'll probably use the least amount of this darker color because it does represent shadows. So now I'll go into a lighter shade. I'm just getting my titanium white. I'm gonna go right over my dollop of magenta that I had there and gently mix it in. It's okay if the paint's a little bit variegated. We don't want this to be too bright because we're gonna do two more layers leading up to white. So this, we just need a little dab of white and we're gonna mix up a lighter shade of that bright magenta. And we're gonna do the same dabbing technique, twisting it between our fingers and going over the area we put the darker shade. Here again, I've sped it up so that you can see what it looks like. And we're just going right over that. We add a little bit more this time than we did with the darker magenta color because we're filling in some of those spaces to make it really look professional. Isn't this fun? This is when it really starts to come together and look beautiful and you start to see what you're trying to create. So I'm gonna go back in with my white again and I'm gonna mix that up with the magenta or the pink now that I have and I'm gonna follow that same process. I'm switching to my smaller square tip brush because the lighter highlights, I want to be a little bit smaller than the ones we did. And then I'm just gently twisting back and forth in my fingers, doing the same dabbing motion with this lighter color. And you can see how doing that, it just really pops. And I kind of just randomly add this color to different sections of the canvas as well, indicating those blossoms dropping. You know, the blossoms never last very long and they always start to fall to the ground. One of my favorite things is walking through that like you're being showered with blossoms. So I speed this process up again because it can be timely. All these things, make sure you take your time. There's definitely no rush. That's a part of the process. But to teach it, I just wanted to make sure it was in a timely manner. And I'm going through and just sporadically adding this third lighter pink. And these different layers, this is what really gives it that realistic effect. This is what makes it start to look so real and so beautiful. And it's simply just by layering things up. That's one of my favorite things about acrylic painting is the layering process. Through that layering, you can create absolutely amazing realistic effects and different types of effects, different techniques and things like that. So I'm just going through rolling that brush back and forth to my fingers to create different shapes and filling in 
those different areas. And if you see where there's holes, you don't want it to be too much, but you don't want there to be big spaces either. You want it to look nice, like a tree wood that's filled with blossoms. So I'm just looking over it. I'm adding some of those falling blossoms all around, which give it a really beautiful look as well. And now we're on to step six, which is just simply using our straight magenta, our bright magenta, and going over the white area, the white breast area, and the tail feathers with that color to create a beautiful bright red effect. And there we can see it starts to look like a robin. Where I come from, robins were always a sign of spring. And so that's why I decided to do the red belly bird because it's a springtime painting. I kind of bring a little bit of that red under the bink as well just to create a very realistic effect and bring it down onto the tail feathers. Doesn't that look so pretty? We're already to our final step. The last step in almost every painting is the white detail. White is something that adds highlight, it adds pop. It just really makes your painting beautiful and stand out. So almost every painting I do, the white detail is always the very last step. So here I'm taking straight white. That pink and magenta is still wet. So as I dab this white on, it will blend in with those colors beautifully. I'm still using my small tipped square brush and I'm just going around and adding white highlights in the same dabbing fashion all along those blossoms and this will be the final step for those I kind of highlight also some of the um, petals that are that were falling you know the ra random little pink dabs that I put away put around excuse me the painting and I just ensure that it looks nice and balanced and there's nice white highlights all along those blossoms. Now we're gonna take white and just brush that right up along the underbelly of our bird, our red belly bird there, and create a beautiful white highlight with that. I'm just gonna kind of blend that in a little bit, um, or excuse me, blend it out basically, having the white against the left side and then blending it through to the next side as well. So it looks nice and smooth and pretty and a realistic effect. The last and final step is your signature. You have to sign your masterpiece. Sometimes it's hard to paint with a, uh, or paint sign your name. I've been doing it so many years. I have the hang of it. So if that feels uncomfortable for you, get a marker, get something else. Here, I'm trying to write COVID-19 somewhere, finding a good space. And I decided to just tuck it away in that corner just to memorialize this time, this time that we're all in together, being stuck at home, um, trying to keep busy, you know, trying to stay sane and just be positive, as positive as possible. I feel that creativity is a wonderful, amazing way to express yourself, to release different emotions that we store up inside, to feel levels of freedom, to tune out to what's going on in the world, space out, and just be able to go into another world and focus on something different. Whether it's music, whether it's dance, whether it's painting, I think this is a wonderful time to really dive deep into your creative releases. I add a little tiny white highlight on the eye there that I show, and now I'm just going to do it up close, showing you all that rich, beautiful detail. Didn't it turn out gorgeous? I hope yours turned out as well. If you don't love it or there's different things you struggled with, please feel free to reach out to me. I love answering any and all questions. I'm going to be doing more of these, so stay tuned if there's other ones that you want to try out. And let's keep creating. Let's keep making the world as beautiful as possible. Thank you so much for joining me. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care.